Okay guys, what we're going to talk about today is acclimating a little bit older dogs to uh, swimming, riding on a kayak, that kind of stuff. Uh, now, you'll know what I like to do. I like early training. I think getting, getting, getting the stuff early is always the best strategy. But uh, we've got Buddy, and uh, Buddy came to us a little bit late, but uh, his mom is wanting him to be able to do some adventure training. And Come here, buddy. So, uh, we've got to get him to where he's used to the water, okay? And so I've got my little acclimation pool here, and I'm just going to climb in here and uh, show Buddy that it's a pretty, pretty good idea to get in here. And he's going to say, well, Stoney, uh, I'm glad you like that. <laughs> but I'm going to stay over here and uh, just stay on this grass. So I'm going to say, no, dude, I, I, need you to, you know, I need you to come in with me. So look, I'm just going to pick him up. Oh, because we don't have forever with this dog. Ah. And uh, we're just going to go right to acclimating him. So I get him, and I'm just going to drop him in the water a little bit. Uh, now the water in this pool is not very deep. Just right about chest level on a dog like this because this is the pool that we normally use to acclimate young puppies to swimming. So for this guy, come on. I'm just going to try to get him in here and get him used to being wet and get him to walk around a little bit. Good. And you'll see like by his posture, he's a little bit nervous. And the reason that we do this in this little pool is so that uh, when we go, oh, we'll get on in there. So that we go down to the river, you know, like that acclimation part of that trip, it, it, it doesn't take as long. So like, say for example, like a, a, a little bit older dog like Buddy, it's going to take us a good two weeks of acclimation work. And uh, that's going to the river and doing this pool, you know, in a series, uh, probably maybe 10, 14, 15 days in a row. Uh, but it'll work out. Now you see right here, this is a, a little bit younger dog that started. Her name's Ember. And so Ember's been with us for a couple of weeks. And you notice she just, you know, she saw us get in the pool and she hops right in here and says, hey, what's going on? I'll, I'll get in there and hang out. And look at the difference in the relaxed nature of the posture between this puppy who has been acclimated at uh, a young age and Buddy, who's just now getting acclimated, right? Okay, so you'll see that Buddy's posture is a little bit more stiff. He's not moving his feet around. He doesn't know, you know, for sure what to think about the buoyancy of this water. And there's just a little bit of buoyancy in play because the water is just kind of hitting their chest. So what happens with your dog when you take them, like, to the river or your local creek or whatever? They'll, you know, they'll walk out in the water. And that initial part of walking out in the water, they're just getting their pads in there. And so that's an obvious physical difference. You know, the water's a different temperature than the air. The sensation of having the water and the mud and the rocks and the sand in between your, your, the dog's uh, uh, toes on his pads, that's different, right? All the smells that are associated with, with, with being in a uh, wet environment, all those things are different. And, uh, and, but that'll be okay. So you'll get them and you'll be going and they'll kind of work the way. And as soon as your dog starts to not be able to touch, right, at the point where the water gets above their kind of their chest cavity, Right? That's what makes them float. They'll start to lose contact with the ground. And when they lose contact with the ground, they'll get real nervous and they'll turn and fight the water and try to get back on the bank. Okay? Uh, that's what we're trying to... We're trying to... We know that's coming when we take him to the river. Uh, but we're, we're trying to, like, uh, acclimate him to that basic sensation before we actually get out there in the real environment. You know? Because it's a long way to the river. So I can do this a bunch of times per day and that's really going to cut down on the amount of time that I have to spend just getting him to understand like how it feels to be in the river. And if I'm going to take a dog kayaking in the river in the lake, that's the first thing I have to have. Is I have to have a dog that, that is comfortable in the water because, you know, what are they worried about? They're worried about, like, getting out of that unstable platform and ending up in the water. So this whole time I'm talking, look at this dog. See how he's not moving? What that does, that indicates to you that he's not particularly comfortable in this environment. Now, see how this one's just moving around doing her own thing? That indicates that she's much more comfortable. My goal... Okay, before I move to the next stage of training, is for this dog to be comfortable when he gets in this pool. Come on, buddy. Just move around a little bit. That's it. Good dog. Oh, you're a good dog. Ember can do it, so you can do it. So I'm just going to kind of walk around in here. Oh, very nice. Oh, you a smart dog. Oh, I splash some water up on him. Just desensitize him to the whole idea of being wet. Oh, very nice. And look at Ember. Ember's like, hey, what about me? Do I get some water splashed on me? Yes, you do. Oh, good. Good dog. You're a very smart dog. 
you can do it. Very nice. Come on. Oh, very nice. Very nice. There you go. You are a fine animal. Now, I show you, look what I'm doing here. You ever been in a swimming pool with little kids and they'll go around the edge and they'll make a whirlpool? Okay, so when we're acclimating puppies, or in this case, a little bit older dog, to the water, we also want to get them used to current. Okay, because you can have a dog, maybe he's doing real good in your swimming pool and maybe you've even taken him out to your local lake. And uh, you go somewhere where you're in a body of water that has a little bit of uh, uh, current to it, you know, it's a stream, right? That'll freak a dog out. So by walking around in a circle here, I'm creating an artificial current right here in this pool. Good, and you might not think about it, but look, when I stop here, let me go over here where Eli can see. Watch, I'm gonna walk around this a little bit. Oh, kind of getting old. I'm getting dizzy. If I fall, somebody jump in and rescue me. All right, but watch right here. Look, Sam, get going. Now look. You see that? How that bucks up against my hand there? Okay, that's current. That's similar to what you feel when you get into a stream. So when you're doing your acclimation work, guys, make sure that you take in the totality of the potential experience, right? So it's not just about being wet, right? Because one of the things that people do is they'll get their dogs out when the weather's perfect. You know, and the water's perfectly warm. Well, water's not always going to be warm, right? So you have to do your acclimation work in a wide range of weather, right? And a wide range of, um, uh, 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 like, uh, uh, water conditions, you know, choppy waves, uh, streams with current, right? And really importantly, too, is you have to make sure that you get your, your dog on as many different textures as possible because sometimes when you're in a body of water you'll be on smooth rocks sometimes you'll be on sand sometimes you'll be in mud you know sometimes it'll be a combination of uh, you know mud and, and rocks and other types of organic matter like uh, tree limbs and things like that right so all those things they can all throw a little bit of a monkey wrench into your into your plans and so when you're doing your work don't think just because you've got in your swimming pool with your dog and the dog's comfortable in the swimming pool, that's gonna necessarily translate to being comfortable in uh, the water at the beach, uh, or on your camping trip, or on your boating trip, you know. This is just a good first step. Very nice, get in here, splash around, get the dogs wet, make some current. Good dog. Okay, so Buddy's in here, and what I'm gonna do since Buddy's in here and he doesn't seem to be going anywhere, I'm just going to take his leash off and let him stand here for a while. And I'm going to call somebody else over here so we can, well, as long as we're out here, we might as well look and see at how other types of dogs might do when you put them in the water. Hey, Cracker Jack. Come here. Oh, well, okay. Here is a big uh, uh, puppy. He's about seven months old, a Malinois German Shepherd mix. Oh, let's see what he does when we chuck him in the pool. Oh. <laughs> Oh, what do you think? He's like, oh, I don't know. And look, Ember's the one that likes it. Oh, hey, Cracker Jack. <laughs> Trump said, that's enough of that. Let's see if I can get somebody else over here. Oh, hey, Rambo, do you want to come? All right, so look at Rambo here. Now, Rambo is a little over a year old, and uh, I don't think he's ever been in the pool. Let's see what he does. Oh. What do you think he's going to do? Eli, hop right out? Uh, probably. Oh! <laughs> you going, Cracker Jack? Oh my gosh. Oh, you have to be so careful picking up these little skinny boars always. Oh, what is this guy going to do? <laughs> uh, huh? He's probably going to sink. <laughs> Are you going to sink? Oh my gosh. Are you starting to get the hang of it, dude? Are you starting to get the hang of it, buddy? Move out of the way, buddy. Let's see what this little fella does. Ah, right, we'll just set him down in here a little bit. Kind of support him. Oh, very nice. Look, that's not bad for old Borzoi. Now his feet aren't doing anything. <laughs> Borzois have zero survival instinct. Oh, come on, you can do it, buddy. Let's go in a circle. Zero survival instinct here. Uh, but he's, 
Hey, <laughs> sweet. Look, Eli's back legs aren't even moving a bit. Uh, but we love him. Oh, uh, can you stand up, Cracker Jack? It's pretty shallow. No, nope, he's just gonna float. Oh, <laughs> uh, come here, little buddy. Oh, you're a good dog. You don't have to have much survival instinct. You'll be okay. No kayaking in your future, I don't think. There you go. Go back over and lay down like you were. All right, here we are. Back with Mr. Buddy. So we're just gonna get a couple of, a couple of more repetitions of moving with the leash here. Good, get him to where he understands he has to kind of be compliant in the water. Oh, very nice. Oh, very nice. Oh, you want back in here, Cracker Jack? Oh, you're a good dog. Should I give Cracker Jack another chance, Eli? I think he's got one more in him. All right, okay. All right, buddy. Don't, oh, don't be straining yourself. Let me help you. Let me help you, little man. Oh, so careful with these boars always. Oh, remember I always talk about setting realistic expectations for the type of dog that you have. Well, when you have these little skinny dogs like this, you gotta be real careful with them. Oh, let's see what happens if I let him go. What's gonna happen, Cracker Jack? Can you swim a little bit? Nope. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Oh, love his heart. Love his heart. Oh, you're a good boy, Cracker Jack. We're not gonna make you swim. That's awesome that you wanted to make the effort, though. I love the effort, guys. I love the effort. Did you see him? He just sunk like a rock. Oh my gosh. Poor Borzoi. Oh, you're a good dog. Dun, 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 dun. This guy's getting lined out. And what I was looking for here before I got him out of this, uh, before I got him out of this pool, is I just wanted to be able to move him. You know what I, uh, what I say about knowing, you know, how you judge whether your dog's compliant or not, is whether you can walk a dog. Come on, come on. Whether you can walk him with one finger, right? So I want to be able to move the dog around in the pool, even with the current going, basically with the leash hanging on my finger. If I can get movement out of him with no more tension, come on, hey, come on, with no more tension than it takes to, you know, just guide him with my finger, then we're in good shape. Come on, buddy. Very nice. Okay. That's a pretty good, that's a pretty good start to the day. So we'll let him out of there. Oh, very nice. Dun, 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 dun. Oh. Oh. All right, and uh, that's how we start off acclimating an older dog uh, to swimming and kayaking. Now we'll head off to the river. New man Bojangles and he danced for me in worn out shoes. Come on, dog. Okay, we're here at the beautiful Kentucky River, and uh, this is the first day that uh, we're going to get Buddy in the river and try to get him on the kayak. Now, we've had him in the pool there at the kennel. And he did fine in the pool, so uh, we're going to see what we can get him to do here at the river. Ah, let me put my kayak in the water. What are you doing, Mr. Buddy? Oh. All right, so get my kayak in the water. Actually, let me just oh, put the kayak over there for a second. Oh, come here, buddy. Oh, come here, man. Oh, let's get out here in this water a little bit. Oh, you can do it. Come on, come on. Come on. Buddy, come on. Oh, come on, man. Oh, very nice. It's not so bad. <laughs> come on, you can do it. Oh, very good dog. You a smarty. Come here, buddy. Come on, come on. Come on. 
Oh, very good. Now, it's, when you're starting with an older dog, guys, uh, sometimes you're just going to have to get out here and, uh, you know, kind of walk around with them. Get on, let them get acclimated. Good. Make them realize there's nothing bad going to happen here in the river. Because it's a, you know, it's a very... It's, you're not just dealing with the water here, you know. You're dealing with the texture. Dog's not used to walking on sand, you know. There's little pieces of wood and rock and stuff down here in the sand. Okay. The water temperature is kind of cold. Whereas the water temperature at the pool, uh, at the kennel, is a lot warmer, you know. Uh, we have a lot of noises and a lot of smells. I mean, there's a lot of smells down here at the river. There's uh, goose droppings, there's uh, old dead fish smell, you know, I mean, just decaying uh, organic matter smell, just lots of stuff going on, okay? And so, like, when a dog comes down, be very patient with them, because, you know, they're getting overwhelmed. They're just getting bombarded. Lots of noise, lots of sights, lots of sounds, lots of textural differences. Uh, it's, it's really, it can really, you know, be, be overwhelming to them. Come on. Come on, buddy. Oh, just try to get them over here where they can swim a little bit. Oh, very nice. Oh, look at you. You're a very good swimmer. Oh, you're a very good swimmer. You sure are. Good dog. Oh, my gosh. Now he's starting to relax and chill out a little bit. Oh, that's a good boy. Let's do one more circle. Come on. Let's do a circle. Oh, very good. Very good. Very nice. Good. Oh, we got a circle. Let's see if we can get two circles. All right. Okay. Look, and so we got a little swim time in there. You know, and the result of having that swim time, he realizes, you know, if you end up in this river, it's not the end of the world. Uh, you know, there's nothing bad that's going to happen if you, if you end up in the river. Well, and so, like, when you're riding in a kayak, guys, really, the, the biggest problem is kind of being scared of falling out of the kayak, right? If you've ever taken a child whitewater rafting or something, you know, they're freaking out about falling in the water until they've been in the water, until they've had a few slips and falls, and then they're fine. All right, so now I'm going to get this guy up in here. Oh, come on, buddy. Oh, you can do it. Come on. Oh, come on. Very nice. Now, you'll notice today we're in a different kayak. I'm normally... Oh, come on. You can do it, buddy. Uh, I'm normally in my Hobie kayaks. But today, I am in this kayak that we picked up at Walmart. And you might ask me, why am I in this kayak since I have such nice kayaks at home? Well, uh, I'll be honest with you because I didn't realize that there's such a wide disparity in the prices of kayaks, you know? And so I put up a lot of videos where I'm taking the dogs out into kayaks and, you know, so people start, they start messing me. He's like, hey, Stoney, I like those kayaks. You know, where'd you get them? What kind are they? And uh, then they would email me back after I told them and they'd be like, dude, that's too expensive. Well, I will tell you, this kayak from Walmart cost, uh, let me see, $235 plus tax. So maybe $250 here in Kentucky. And I got it delivered right to the Walmart uptown for free, right? Now, that's about 10% of what a Hobie kayak co costs. And for dog adventuring and just going out to your local river and having a good time, this uh, Walmart Tamarack kayak, it's plenty fine. Now, it's not durable. It doesn't have the features that my Hobie has. I'm not in any way implying that. But uh, we've been having a real good time with it. And I didn't want to seem like uh, I was trying to be too fancy. So I thought we would get this and show you. You know, adventuring with your dog, dog training, having a good time. It doesn't have to be expensive. Oh, my gosh. And looky here. And this is what we're going to do. This is Monday of this week. Now, Eli and I are going to come down here every day this week until this dog gets to where he'll come out, get in the water, swim around on his own, and uh, he'll get on the kayak when I tell him, okay? Now, once he'll get on the kayak when I tell him, then I know he's ready to actually go kayaking, okay? And uh, it's very important that you do your leg work here 
because there's nothing more aggravating, you can ask Eli back there behind the camera, <laughs> than trying to take a dog kayaking before they're ready. Because about the time you get out in the middle of the channel, <laughs> they get out and they start going to the bank. And then once they get on the bank, you're trying to get to the bank and catch them and bring them back. And so, you know, but you live and you learn. When you're young, uh, you always try to rush things. When you're old, you take your time up front because the bill is going to be paid in dog training. So you can pay either pay it up front with your preparation work uh, or you can pay it in the end with remedial work, but the bill always gets paid. No reason for your first few sessions to last too long. Okay. Just a few minutes here and there. Very nice. What I'd really like to see is just this posture kind of uh, relax. You know, ultimately, you know, you're really, you know, your dog's really acclimated properly to the kayak when they just lay down. They just get up there and they lay down and they chill and relax. And uh, they're, you know, they're just doing what you do. <laughs> so basically, when the dog looks as happy about kayaking as you look about kayaking, that's when you're in the right spot, okay? When you get into kayak and you're first doing it, you'll be nervous too and you'll kind of be like, oh, oh, I'm going to fall, I'm going to turn, I'm going to fall, right? So same thing you see with this tension in this dog's body. You'll have that tension too. So before you do your dog, okay, you might want to spend a little extra time in the kayak making sure that you're comfortable because you have to be an emotional leader with your dog. If you're not comfortable, then the dog's sure not going to be comfortable. Now see this guy's starting to relax a little bit. Not completely, but he's relaxing a little bit. Just going to put some movement in here. Oh, he's thinking about jumping out. And if he jumps out, you know, no big deal. I mean, I'm only in waist deep water. I'm going to try to keep him from jumping out if I can, though. Oh, just relax, dude. Just relax. Out. And in. If you're thinking in terms of time frames here, when you're working with a little bit older dog, you're probably going to have to allow maybe, you know, 75% to 80% more time, you know. Well, maybe more than that, really. I mean, if you're going to do it, let's say, I, let's say with a puppy, I might come down here, you know, five days in a row and just do acclimation. With this dog here, I'm probably going to spend maybe 10 days in a row doing acclimation. And it's different from dog to dog. Like some of them, they just hop right up in the kayak and they just chill right off the bat. Dun, dun, dun. Now, if the kayak, see right there, it starts to, starts to like get a little nervous and the kayak starts moving, just put your hands on the kayak and stabilize it, okay? Because when they get nervous and they start to, see how the kayak starts to shaking? Then like, then they try to get their balance and they get it in, a, in this weird feedback loop where like the, what they're doing is actually compounding their own nervousness. So see, I just put my hands on the kayak, hold it still. And then once he relaxes, then I'll go back to moving him around. All right, and uh, that's enough. So I'm gonna take him to the bank. And uh, then I'm gonna get him off of here and bring him back out here and let him do just a little bit more in the way of uh, swimming. Good, and we'll call it a, a session. Okay, buddy. Good boy. Come on, come on. Now you're getting it. Oh, now you're getting it. You're such a smarty. You are such a smarty. Very nice dog. Very nice dog. Whoa. Come on, come on, come over here. Oh, very nice dog. You're very sweet. Come on. Let's make a circle. Good. Good. Now, see, I'm just making him make a circle. I'm kind of gradually moving him out here where he's actually swimming. And you'll see, just like a little kid, when you start moving him into that deeper water, they'll start trying to touch the bottom and pop up. That's not what you want. You want to, you want to keep them moving until they start being able to actually control their movement with the swimming. 
very nice like right there and see so as I spin him around I'm gonna bring him out in the deeper just a little bit and then I'm gonna let him swim to the bank and that's all I'm doing is making him understand that if he swims see right there now he will swim his way up onto the bank and then he can walk out all right and that's a basic swimming and kayak lesson for an older dog see you guys later adventure dude come on get on this kayak very nice oh, oh. Oh, what a smarty. What a smarty. Very nice. Pedals. Ah, I got my paddle. Got my ace dog buddy. And we are off to the races. This is Little Stoner Creek. We're at a little place called Fryman's Boat Dock. Ah, you guys know how I'm a big fan of finding adventure right in your own hometown. Well, this little boat dock is about 20 minutes from my kennel and it sets on what's called uh, Little Stoner Creek. So if you ever get a chance to, uh, you know, come and hang out between Paris, Kentucky and Winchester, Kentucky, and you want to do a little kayaking or a little fishing or a little camping, uh, look up Fryman's Boat Dock. Okay. Now you can come here and you can rent canoes, you can rent John boats, you can bring your own boat, you can uh, camp, you know, it's an awesome experience. It's just a great little creek and uh, it's just, it's just, so it's, it's almost free. It's, it's unbelievably free. Uh, when we parked here, like to, for me to park here, place is perfectly manicured. Show them Eli. Place is perfectly manicured and uh, so we come over here and bring our kayaks. I bring the dogs and it's only five dollars. You know, <laughs> they have a little store up there. So if you ever come out, I mean, obviously you should patronize their store, but uh, you can rent a you can rent a kayak here. You can rent a John boat here. Uh, it's really awesome. The staff, there's super nice little staff in there. Very knowledgeable about what types of lures to use to catch certain fish at any given time of the year. You know, really help you get your children lined out if you just want to come and drop a line in the water and take little Johnny fishing. Uh, and what's neat, if you rent a boat and you'll be nice and quiet as you move up the creek, uh, there's a lot of cattle around here. And so that's what we're doing today. Is not only are we working on our kayak skills with Buddy, okay, because I kind of got those licked, you know. We started him off in the little pool, and then we took him up to the river. He did pretty good at the river. And uh, we're headed to the lake here in a few days. But we're going to come to this creek for a while just because the level of environmental socialization in this creek is a lot higher than what it is at the river. Ah. Ah. Shit, 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 shit. Okay, in the spirit of real adventure training, what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to skirt this bank and uh, come up alongside that pack of wild cattle and uh, keep my golden doodle from jumping off and engaging in his natural wolf-like behavior, you know. So, uh, there's a wide range of possibilities, things that might happen here. You know, one, this golden doodle might revert to his wolf roots and jump off here and attack one of those uh, wild cattle. Or two, that herd of wild cattle might attack us in this kayak. If so, and this is my last living will and testament. Uh, well, listen, I'm not giving anything away. <laughs> Just burn it in a pile. All right, Eli, let's sneak up on these cattle. So we're going to try to put the paddles away because paddles make too much noise banging on the boat. Get over here in the shade. I feel a little bit like a caveman. Me and my trusty wolf. Out in the wilds, we've spotted a herd, and now we have to go collect our supper. Eli, how do you think uh, me and this golden doodle would have fared as a caveman uh, and wolf stock? Not very good. 
Wish me luck. We're gonna follow this bank line. Now see, this is where your dog really has to have some good nerve to him. Because I have to get under this brush in order to get close to my prey. Now this is the only problem with these Hobie kayaks and this Mirage Drive is you need a certain amount of water to draft, otherwise the fins hit the hit the bed of the stream. So we're gonna have to stay just a little ways off the bank. Be really quiet. Very quiet. Alright, Wolf, be ready. Dunnant. 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 <laughs> <sighs> it's all fun and games till the golden doodle jumps out of the kayak. To start again. Now what's even funnier is that uh, Buddy's owners are from California. And they're liable to really believe that this is a pack of wild cattles <laughs> running through the wilderness of Kentucky. That's what a true hunter does. Doesn't let the environment bother him. Stays focused. Here we go. Ninja quiet. Stay still, buddy. Keep your nerve. And just like that, we're in attack range. If I was a caveman, instead of this paddle, I'd have a spear, and I would send my trusty wolf to isolate one of the young or the weak or the old from this herd, and I would chase him down. There's my wolf. My wolf is coming into play. That wolf instinct is strong in the golden doodle. Attack, attack, buddy, attack. Attack! Get him! Get him, buddy! Well, <laughs> all right, so I got a little growling. I didn't get any actual attacking. <laughs> I guess my caveman, <laughs> I guess my caveman, <laughs> uh, I guess my caveman experiment did not work. Hush, hush. But this is what I'm talking about, guys, about an acclimation. You really got to go out of your way to, you know, look for all the different eventualities that my wolf slash golden doodle might encounter in life. <laughs> ah, well, it looks like I'd be starving to death, Eli. Yeah. Did he even? Did he even make any? I couldn't see him. Did he even make any? Like, they had zero fear of the golden doodle. <laughs> Oh, that's too funny. All right, guys, and just like that, we've wrapped up another dog training video. And, uh, you know, this one was especially fun because we've had a good time, you know. Uh, we had this California doodle here, and, uh, you know, our owner, you know, he kind of emailed me and said, Hey, Stoney, can my dog learn to ride on a kayak? And can my... And I was like, well, yeah, sure, I guess. It'll take a little longer because it's older, but, you know, we'll have a good time with it. And guys, that's it. If you want to do a good job dog training, all you have to do is focus on having a good time and making sure that your dog has a good time and get out and learn by doing, okay? Listen, you know, here you've watched this whole video. We started off in a little tub of water and then uh, we went to the river and hung out down there for a little while and now we're on a safari at a creek. But none of this stuff's very far from my house. It's all within 20, 30 minutes. You know, this awesome adventure spot right here it's 15 minutes away from my house, okay? I can throw a rock through those trees right there and hit a fire truck, <laughs> you know? But as long as you choose to perceive that it's an adventure, then it's an adventure. This dog doesn't know the difference between right here and Zimbabwe, 
okay? So I get up every day. If I bring my little girl over here, I tell her we're going on safari. If I bring Eli over here, because he's only 20, I tell him we're going on safari. You know, I mean, it's better than uh, flipping hamburgers, right? Not bad. Go on safari with Stoney for a living. That ain't bad, right? But look, guys, I can't, uh, I can't afford to go to Africa. You know, Eli works for me. He certainly can't afford to go to Africa. But I can have adventures, and my dogs can have adventures, and your dogs can have adventures too. And the great thing about having adventures is adventures teach you everything you need to know about life. So look, get out there. You know, have you a puppy-sized adventure right close to you, you know, because they're there, and your dog will learn everything they need to know about being a good dog. All right, see you later. So now, <laughs> now what's your name again? My name is Lindsay Fryman. I'm afraid of cameras. Lindsay Fryman. And Lindsay Fryman <laughs> yeah. would not sell me a beer. I'm out here working hard, kayaking, kayaking, making movies in the wilderness, and Lindsay would not sell me a beer. And so we got to talking, and turns out that Lindsay is quite the entrepreneur. All right, oh, really? so here we are, and this is Lindsay's empire. Yay. Look at this, guys. This <laughs> is fantastic. This is the most awesome thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> all right, so Lindsay, tell us what all you do here. Well, we have um, boat rentals, we do camping, and then we also have people who come in, bring their own boat, go fishing, have a good time. So there's bank fishing you can get into, you can set a tent up, it's $10 a night. Um, putting a boat in is $5. If you wanted to rent a boat from us, we do that from eight to six, in the, or eight o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the afternoon. And we do kayaks, we do john boats, we do canoes, and we do um, paddle, boat, paddle boats. So if you want to weigh yourself out, or um, where your kids out, that's a good way to do it. And um, beyond that, we do events. So we have a couple of different events we do through the year, but our event we're planning for right now is in October, and that is our haunted trail. So um, as I'm sitting here picking latex and junk off of my hands, that's what I was doing when I was asked about selling alcohol without having an ID, which is why I did not sell you an alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> but um, for the most part, we just have a lot of fun down here. Okay, cool. Now, how can people get in contact with you? You can find us online. We are frymansboatdock.com, or you can find us on Facebook, and that is Frymans Boat Dock um, Bait Shop and Gallery, which the gallery thing, it's a whole big story. You can ask, you can comment, and you can get all kinds of information from those um, two sources I just gave you. Or all if you right. just want to call me up, you can 859-362-8668. That gets you the shop number, not my cell phone number. All right. Hey, thanks a lot, Liz. Bye-bye. <laughs> uh -huh. What do you think, Eli? It's an awesome place. This is an awesome place, dude. You can, you can get a workout in, you know. You can do just about anything you want out here. Very nice. Aww. Very nice work, Lindsay. Thank you. If it, this is one of Casey McKinney's pieces. He is an artist out of Louisville, Kentucky. My husband knew him in college somehow. Um, as artist type, we mix of all types, you know, together. So. We asked him to create something for this space, and um, he came out and measured it and did it in panels, and then installed it, and it's been here for about two years now. Wow. And yeah, it's fun. It's nice to have some different art around the place. I think it just lends to it, the yeah, atmosphere. All right, show us your store. Okay, um, and then, you know, we're getting ready for Halloween, so it is like a bomb went off in it, I'm sorry. But um, this is our shop, it's kind of, um, we spent a long time looking at Pinterest when we were designing it, basically. My poor contractor was like, you want me to do what? I'm like, yeah, I want tin on the ceiling and I want you to make it look rustic industrial. And he was like, that's crazy. Okay, and, we'll see what can happen here. And then you and your husband make these uh, lures? Yes, and we'll have employees that we train to help us as well. So like we have the chatter baits and then we have, um, let's see, we got brush jigs, we got some rooster tails and we, we've made a lot of Here's our buzz baits and our spinner baits and the tube baits that are on the wall. And those are things that we're still working on trying to kind of perfect how we want those to look. But then we have other stuff that we do. We do the t-shirts and that kind of started with, you know, the first time I wanted to get t-shirts printed, I, I had asked um, a company to do it and it was gonna cost me like $15 a shirt to get them done. And I was like, wow, there's no way you could do retail that way. So I went to Hobby Lobby and got me a kit and I learned how to do it myself. <laughs> And so that's how I can keep them at $10 a piece, which is a very economical, fun price that people can afford. Reps, you know, you know, $25 at a resort is too much. And that's sort of my thing, too. I want to make sure people have an Order opportunity. You one of these shirts online. <laughs> Find it. Call me. I'll get you one and mail it to you. <laughs>
Yeah, I'll do custom orders too. I do that a lot. People are like, I want an extra large in these colors. And I'm like, okay, give me a bit and I'll get it together. Now those baits are baits made by certain people who are local. So like these wildcat lures, these are made by a fellow named Anthony, if I can remember his last name. It's been a while since I've talked with him actually, but we bought those from him. And <laughs> I feel bad because I got all this stuff all over my hands. And then another fellow that comes down here is Charlie McFadden and he does his crankbaits and they are pretty sweet. Like this one's supposed to mimic bass. And then this one, I think that one's supposed to mimic another kind of crappie or sunfish. So th those are what Charlie McFadden does. They're beautiful baits. And he's an artist also. So he, he's done illustrative work before and he does paintings and he always comes in with his phone and he's like, look what I made. And I'm like, cool, because I love to see art. I never get around to go seeing it other places other than online. Cool. So. All right, so you're getting ready for Halloween. Show us your, <laughs> show us what you're working on. <laughs> what we got right here? Oh my God, the bearded dragon. Oh yeah, that's Quagmire. <laughs> yeah, he does the thing, you know, the giggity giggity, so that's how he got his name. Yeah. So it it looks like a mad scientist has been running around here. Um, that's me. So we have zombies and zombie girls and I'm not sure what the duct tape straw men are going to be, but I'll find a purpose for them. But a lot of this stuff is actually repurposed from other projects. So it's kind of like recycling um, from last year. That's cool. Show Eli down around your boat dock and okay. take him over to the cornfield. Okay. So, yeah, it's a maze. Just getting through here is a maze. It won't be this way when the, the, the thing starts, but... Um, all these rocks came right from the property. Actually, I love this part. It was something that we started to dig a pond and then we realized it wouldn't hold water. So all the rocks that were there in the way, um, they put them here. And I love it because there's all kinds of fossils in them. And I'll tell kids when they come camping, it's like, hey, there's fossils out in the rocks. And they're like, oh, cool T-Rex. And then they come looking and they're like, there's no T-Rex. I'm like, but it's just shells and stuff and it's really cool. But um, it's one of my favorite places. And then, this is the gym part of it. We have the water, and I love it. This is the best place in the morning to have your coffee. And it's also one of the best places to sit in the afternoon after everybody leaves and just kind of soak in the sunset. But, um, you know. Show him how comfortable that chair looks. Which one? This one? Yeah. Oh, yay. Now, do you live, do you live here where? Uh, no, I live close. I live about five minutes away, so I'm always just a phone call away. But, um. Cool. <laughs> and I love watching all the little funky things that grow on these things. Are you from Paris? No. My dad was military. Oh, my son's at West Point. Really? Yep. I think, well, my dad was, um, he didn't do the whole West Point thing. He, that's, that's very prestigious. Congrats on that. But um, my dad was a Green Buyer military institution. Okay. And then he went from there to ROTC and everything and Eli's career military. Career military too. Oh, yeah? Awesome. Oh, yeah, well, I, yeah, it's funny because I did notice that car being USAA. I'm like, it's military. Yeah. <laughs> 